respected chair and distinguished participants from Sri Lanka and abroad, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Brigadier General Amin Akbar from Bangladesh. Uh, I'm here with my colleagues, General Mushfiq and also Colonel Mahmoud from Bangladesh. So let me start with uh, giving a big thank you to our friendly country of Sri Lanka and of course uh, uh, the Sri Lanka Army in particular for their kind hospitality. Um, also appreciate how they are conducting this seminar in a uh, professional manner of global standard. Uh, we in Group Bravo were given uh, the topic, the importance of integrated planning in the contemporary security landscape. What we did, uh, we sat for two hours uh, in uh, the Tulip Room and uh, talked amongst ourselves. Uh, believe me, it was an experience of integrated planning itself. So we had the moments of agreements, debates, convergence, and divergence of opinions. And that is the whole essence of our topic, uh, which is integrated planning. Anyway, we managed to put together a presentation. Uh, myself and my friend Colonel Justice from Rwanda will try to do justice to convey what our other team members have thought and uh, wanted us to deliver in front of you. So we are simply the spokespersons, so don't kill the messenger if you don't like the presentation. Uh, these are basically the views of our whole sub-syndicate. Uh, what we try to do is uh, divide our uh, agenda in three points. That is, uh, we wanted to revise the concepts of contemporary security landscape. Uh, and then go on to define uh, the concept of integrated planning itself and then give you some importance, challenges uh, and the scope of application of integrated planning in the contemporary and wider security context. Uh, what I will do is uh, take on first two points uh, and then ask my friend to come up with the most important part of the presentation. Uh, I'll set the stage for him. Uh, contemporary security landscape has been talked about so many times over the last two days. Uh, I don't really have to uh, remind you or go through all the points, but in general we are talking about blending of traditional and non-traditional uh, security threats in defining or understanding the landscape of uh, today's security. Uh, Dr. Shannon had mentioned four key threads. We are borrowing his points. He talked about uh, conventional wars, although in the postmodern uh, era, after the Second World War, we don't see too many uh, conventional wars, but they're still there. And then he has highlighted the other uh, facets of security, including humanitarian disaster relief, uh, terrorism, and I like the final part, the frontier threats the emerging fields of conflict, uh, including the technology, spa outer space, uh, and, and other domains of conflict. So if we uh, try to, uh, we wanted to actually highlight more on human security, and the things that are being flashed on the ground are different facets of human security. You can read for yourself. There is a 1994 UN definition adopted by UNDP of the human security, how they um, are shaping the definition of uh, uh, contemporary security landscape. For example, climate is a big part in it. The water, the resource conflict is going to be the source of conflict. Uh, energy crisis is uh, one important thing. Uh, oil is the most uh, coveted commodity. Uh, and then transformational, uh, transnational organized crime. Why we think uh, the integrated, the concept of integrated planning has something to do. Uh, and of course, uh, cyber and <clears throat> security, again, great scope to work together. <clears throat> Two things are important as far as the characteristics of these threats. These uh, are uh, 
this they would trans, trans, transcend uh, or go across the boundaries of the nation states and um, they are interconnected in nature. Uh, so these are the two important takeaways in understanding uh, the threats, both traditional and non-traditional. There is a sense of continuity also. So let me take the help of uh, this slide to uh, define or how we understood the integrated planning process. Uh, if you just want to have a generic definition, it's about joint uh, planning activities involving all hands, all stakeholders, that, that's the general meaning. Now, if, if we talk about, I try to put it in terms of levels and scope, we can have application from tactical to all the way uh, global approach. Uh, uh, those who are in the military, we understand that at tactical level, it's about combined arms operation, different arms and services work together. Uh, going up one step up at operational level, it's about joint warfare between uh, different services come to national level, and I like the, uh, the phrase whole of government approach, which is basically inter-ministerial, inter-agency um, uh, at national level, which is uh, also strategic in nature. And this is open-ended. We, we could go up to regional and uh, global levels. Uh, in regional level, we call it regional cooperation. Uh, take it to another height is uh, regional integration. Mm, and global approach, although may or may not have um, so much support these days because of fragmentation uh, among the frontline actors, but that's, that's a vision, that's the way to go uh, to promote the idea of integrated planning. So if you like, we can um, use uh, the terms whole of government approach at national level. Uh, and use it interchangeably with integrated planning because we felt that this term is kind of limiting the scope uh, remaining within a specific uh, service or organization. So in our discussion, we talked about the whole of government approach and we are meaning actually the same thing in an uh, extended, with an extended scope. Uh, we also talked about the definition of national security and uh, it's just a repetition of things that we all already know that national security is no more about uh, military. Uh, I know we have some cadets upstairs and they might be wondering uh, why it is not about defense uh, but as you grow up you'll understand that the scope of national security includes the agenda like prosperity, the human security, the well-being of the people, and also how a nation positions itself in relation to other countries in the international system, which is the influence. So some countries can have other agendas to define their national security objectives. That's why I put a question mark. Now, it is not only the military, there are other instruments of uh, power, uh, elements of power, they call it dime plus plus, uh, in, in that whole of society uh, is a good way to uh, put forward the spirit of integrated planning in which you not only have uh, the state actors or the, uh, the NGOs, you also have the whole of society coming together in an inclusive discussion uh, to address the security needs. I think I am done with my part and have some time for my friend. I'll be followed by Colonel Justice for the rest of the presentation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, after a discussion in our uh, group, uh, we looked at the, after looking at the complexity and nature uh, and the threats uh, to contemporary security, we thought that uh, counter, any effort to counter the threats must be coordinated, uh, whether at international level, regional or national level, uh, in a multidimensional uh, approach. At the national level, uh, we looked at uh, uh, having all government actors uh, involved, uh, private sector, international uh, NGOs and 
national NGOs, civil society, and uh, some scholars are, are thinking of singling out uh, the information or media society as a standalone category uh, because of the, they are increasingly becoming uh, critical shapers of the narratives. Uh, then why integrated planning is important. Uh, it uh, ensures uh, that the government address threats in a timely and coordinated manner. It also increases effectiveness of security sector with the support of other stakeholders. It prevents duplication in execution. It builds domestic harmony and reconciliation. It enhances regional and international confidence and cooperation. It also serves as a way of having inputs uh, for policy formulation and policy reviews. It allows economical, efficient, and concentrated utilization of resources. It also builds confidence. Uh, it uh, enhances intelligence sharing. It creates close cooperation among stakeholders. And it creates uh, that common sense uh, or common vision for a unified purpose. It also uh, provides legitimate of any action to be taken. Uh, it also allows centralized coordination and execution. However, there are challenges uh, to integrated planning, whether at international, regional, or national levels. At the international level, one of the challenges is the divergent national geopolitical interests and objectives. Uh, just for an example, is when you look at uh, the current uh, uh, climate change threat, we have uh, superpowers that uh, look at it as uh, a non threat. And then we looked at the sovereignty of states. Some nations are scared when it comes to, uh, to international uh, level. Some States are scared of uh, losing some level of their sovereignty uh, in uh, planning for supranational, or, or most especially when uh, there are some hegemonies within the coalitions. Uh, obviously, the foreigner policy of states are uh, drafted uh, in regard to their uh, national aspirations and national interests and objectives. Hence, some of the foreign policies of uh, st some states uh, would not allow um, uh, involvement in uh, such a planning. Uh, because of some of the states with hid uh, hidden agendas would not want to share information on intelligence and uh, also, we looked at sharing of resources as one of the challenges. And even when there's sharing of resources, uh, some resources come with uh, strings attached. Obviously, we looked at the technolog uh, technological trends as one of the challenges. Uh, lastly, we looked at the way forward, uh, looking at the nature of contemporary security uh, threats. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, a whole of government approach being the best uh, where all the elements of national power are involved in the planning process. And uh, this uh, will ensure the integrate, that the planning integrates all elements uh, within the stakeholders. This integrated planning, whether at international and national levels, uh, we ensure we enhance democracy, tolerance, and diversity. 
ultimately achieving sustainable peace and security. We thank you.